Hey, this is Simeon, and I've been thinking a lot about architects and buildings and different projects and how you start those. And most of the time you start with a drawing, you start with a sketch, you come up with an idea, uh, you find a napkin and you write down or you make a drawing or doodle something. It starts with being able to put your ideas down in a very simple and quick way. And with the release of Cubase 13, Steinberg has introduced a new version of Iconica, and they're calling it Iconica Sketch. And this takes the beautiful sounds of the larger uh, Iconica titles, and it puts them in a very uh, accessible packet. And if an idea hits you all of a sudden, well, you can pull up your DAW even on your laptop and be able to sketch out these beautiful ideas without sacrificing the quality of the sounds because they all are derived from the beautifully recorded sounds of Iconica, Iconica ensembles and sections and players and opus. So you have those beautiful sources. So we're gonna take a quick look at Iconica Sketch and have some fun along the way. So it is uh, in the Halion, Halion Sonic. Uh, it works in the free player. If you don't have Cubase 13 Pro, you can purchase this on a standalone basis and use it in Halion, Halion Sonic, and whatever DAW you choose. What I love about Halion and Halion Sonic is the ability to access 16 parts. So you've got 16 parts available so you can make some beautiful combinations. We've got all of these beautiful libraries that are available and I'm very excited about seeing more uh, libraries. And here we go, Iconica Sketch. And we have everything from bass clarinets all the way to xylophone. And let's just go ahead and start and have some fun with the bass clarinet. <laughs> Very rich, we have key switches, you have staccato, marcato, sustains, and we can use the CC11 and CC1 to adjust those dynamics. Very cool. And I'm gonna go ahead and detach the uh, media bay so we can kind of set this over here and String basses, <laughs> we're kind of going up uh, down the alphabet, but here we go. This is the string basses, and this is velocity control, the shorts. And that's the shorts and pizzicato. You can hear right away. I mean, the sound is just very good. And it's surprising for a library that um, is not that large when you compare it to other full-sized orchestral libraries. And then the sustain. Even legatos. Sustained vibrato. Just gives a little more emotion. And let's go on to the other um, instruments in the string section. So we've got celli, and you know, by default, it kind of starts with the sustain, uh, with the shorts, the staccato. Velocity determines the dynamic layer on the shorts. So you can see the indicator showing you like PP, MP, and all the way to triple F. <laughs> so we've got a wide range of dynamic layers. Pizzicato. Spiccato. Spiccato is a little more aggressive and sustains.
Listen to how expressive that is. And to me, this is by no means a stripped down orchestral library. It just has... It just has a good uh, sound, and you know, compared to full full size libraries, I think they maintained a very um, very nice quality. You know, they maintained it. You know, tremolo, and then the sustained vibrato just gives a little more emotion. To it. And I've got CC11 and CC1. Uh, the stream deck is covering up these uh, faders here, but um, on my on my mix face, I've got the uh, CC11 and CC1 here. So that's what I'm using to adjust those dynamics. And those are critical because that just gives the motion and the life to it. Uh, we've we sort of heard the uh, bass clarinet. Listen to the air. And it was recorded in the Funk House studio, and it has this, um, I guess we, we use this word all the time, but cinematic and film, uh, that, that ambience, the room sounds very good. Mercado. And let's go ahead and go to the legato. Isn't that nice? And English horn. It always reminds me of uh, Peter and the Wolf. Um, just those iconic sounds. Iconic, iconic. Uh, I get it. <laughs> so... Uh, sustained vibrato. And let's go to the legato. And you notice the, the legato just has a very subtle. Has a very subtle vibrato. And we'll go back to that media browser <laughs> and flute. And you know what? We do not have any effects. We don't, we, there's, there are no effects on this. And so you get that natural ambience of the room. Gorgeous. And let's just try the legato with the flute. Very nice. And, you know, we, we just go down the alphabet. Uh, Glockenspiel, and there's only one articulation for that. Gorgeous and harp. That's gorgeous. 
and you know some of these they just have the one articulation like the um you know like the harp and the glockenspiel uh we have the horn staccato sustain and it's like a solo horn That's so cool. And you've got the horn section. Very bright in your face. Uh, marimba. <laughs> We've got a whole percussion map as well, just kind of maps out all the percussion across the keyboard. And you can control those dynamics. So they've given you just about everything. Just stretched it all the way across the keyboard. And timpanis, we've got trombones. got a very bright sound and with the sustains and control over the dynamics so we've got no less than one two three four five six seven eight like eight dynamic layers legato Very, very good. Trumpets. Legato. So this is a single trumpet. Trumpets, the section. Really cool. Legato. And let's just go ahead and touch on the violins.
legato. We've got spiccato as well. Spiccato has just that little more aggressive nature to it. Sustains. Kind of straight. But then we've got the sustain with a little light vibrato. I find that little bit of motion. Really beautiful. And we've got legato for the strings. Violins. And they include violins too. So we've got violin one and violin two. And let's go with the legato for those. Violin one and two, when you put them together in an arrangement, they kind of just make, make things a little bit bigger because of just the difference of uh, just another section. And then you can harmonize and use different things. Wow, look at this. We're already at the xylophone. It just gives you those little extra touches. And uh, I just think that's really cool. One of the cool things that I love about Hallian and the concept of Hallian, Hallian Sonic, is that you can create uh, really big parts and multis using the 16 different uh, you know, program slots. And what I've done, I went ahead and created a couple of those uh, using, um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, using these sections, I just kind of took these and created my own multis. And so we can go up here and then um, we'll go to some of these users and let's see. And I went ahead and used the ratings so I can kind of get to get to them pretty quick. So I've, I've got a violin and horn ensemble that I created. So when we click on that, it will, um, it will bring that up. And you can see I've got violins one, uh, violas, cello, basses, timpani, and I've got all of the articulations set on sustain and uh, even got a timpani uh, here. And this is only going to be triggered uh, when I hit a certain velocity range. So not only can you set key ranges, we can set velocity switches to create uh, some really beautiful, uh, powerful ensembles. So this is, uh, this is just like a sustained using all the sections. Violins one, viola, cello, basses. Lay in bed timpani. so much fun. And what I thought I would do too is create like a another um, combination, another multi, uh, but focus on the short articulations. And this is what that sounds like. Still have the same instruments, 
uh, but I added some trumpet. So, and that's velocity switched. So we can go here and you can see I've got those uh, trumpets coming in only when I get to like velocity 99 and above. That's a lot of fun. And so we've got all of this packed into just this, um, this very uh, modest but powerful library. So when I first started thinking about Iconica Sketch, uh, I thought, what could I do for fun to just put a, an orchestration together very quickly? And so my first thought, it just went right to this. Um, you know, growing up, I, I was a big fan of Gilligan's Island. And like I mentioned, if you've, if you've seen any of my other videos, most of my classical training came from Warner Brothers cartoons and uh, sit, classic uh, TV shows and sitcoms that used classical music. Uh, you know, growing up, you know, the, the exposure to classical music, I, I was, it was through, um, through movies and television because they were so clever and they incorporated these things. You didn't know that you were getting educated while you were watching and having fun. And so Gilligan's Island uh, had an episode where a movie producer landed on the island and they were trying to convince him about an idea to, and, and a plan uh, to be able to get them off the island, that, that he would take them with, uh, with him when he, when he left the island. So they came up with an idea of, of putting a musical version of Hamlet together. They, they do this to be or not to be. And, you know, come to find out, it was from Carmen. It was the habanera from uh, Carmen. Da -da 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 -da. And so I thought, hey, that would be a lot of fun to do. I think it took me like 45 minutes, if, if that, to kind of put this little piece together. And it's just so amazing to hear the sounds coming out of it. If you have Hallian, uh, you'll know that it comes with a couple of really nice pianos. So I thought, well, let's pull up uh, one of the pianos and use that. So let's see. Um, yeah, so I made a multi to be or not to be. And so I pulled up the Raven uh, because uh, Hallian and Hallian Sonic, they come with um, Raven and Eagle and just a whole lot of other instruments that you can incorporate. So I thought I would just pull up the Raven because it just had that nice classical tone to it. And uh, so, are you ready to go take a, uh, a visit to Gilligan's Island? And uh, So let's have some fun. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 